Okay, welcome everybody. And thanks for joining us for this, uh, I think it's the last session for the day, but it's an interesting one. So I'm Mike, uh, this is Dennis, we are both from the BMW Group. And uh, together with Julia from AWS, um, we teamed up and built an analytic solution based on AWS technology uh, to help us to steer through the, beam, uh, through the semiconductor shortage. So, quick some, some information about BMW. If you don't know the brand, we do cars. We make cars, um, 2.3 million last year, uh, especially in the premium sector. We basically um, deliver cars all over the world. We have production sites all over the world and a very complex supply chain. Uh, which will be a part of this solution uh, for sure. And in terms of our IT structure, we have different IT hubs everywhere in the world. And our core IT center is based in Munich, which, uh, yeah, which basically uh, enables our tech offices with the newest technology also uh, provided by, uh, among others by AWS. But to lead you into the topic, um, the last two and a half years, uh, we were facing a very difficult environment. Yeah, we had uh, basically, as every other automotive manufacturer, we have, manufacturer, we had um, some supply shortages uh, with semiconductors. And among this difficult environment, we had obviously to use technology to deal with this kind of complexity and with this kind of difficulties. And one solution we created we would like to present you today. And this is actually what we do if we have a shortage and cannot avoid a shortage of, uh, of the semiconductors. So we couldn't solve it in advance, so we basically have to deal with it. And to do it, I would like to introduce you the, the, the complexity of three entities within BMW. So basically, we have the sales department, we have procurement, and we have production. And all three have to interact together uh, if we have a supply shortage. It doesn't matter whether it's caused by a semiconductor shortage or any other, but the point is normally a shortage happens within our supplier network, which means basically saying they cannot deliver the parts we, we need to build a car. And to get the, uh, to get the extent of it, like one car normally on average, consists of 100,000 parts. So if we have now a shortage, then obviously this can be, can, can be effective our, our whole production lines. On the other hand, we have our customers like you, yeah? and we give you, as BMW, the power of choice. So you have actually the possibility to customize your own cars. You can actually decide whether you want to have a pan panoramic roof in your car whether you want to have it in green, red, or whether you want to have, for example, advanced headlights that follow the road with you. It's all your options, all your choices, which makes it, which gives you the opportunity, and we don't want to take this away from you, but it obviously makes the world a little bit more complex for us in the supply chain and in the production. So those three entities we have to bring together when we have a, when we have a shortage. So we have the supply chain where we're actually looking on parts, that go into cars, and those cars are produced for you as customers. So obviously, if the supply doesn't meet the demand, we have to do some allocations. Yeah? And this is where the, actually, this, uh, the analytic solution takes into account. So first of all, then, the solution brings for all three entities transparency, and very quickly. So basically, when we have a shortage at, at the parts, we already know, okay, this part goes in this car and in this option you choose as a customer. Once we have this transparency done, we can now decide, what are we doing with that? Is it, is it you as a customer from the States we want to deliver first? Or do, we, do we have, or do we want to deliver a certain car in an Asian region first? There are like, decisions that our, our sales department have to do in those situations. And since we have such a variety of combinations, it's very hard for them to do it only by their own knowledge. So analytics will help us to do this. And this is the second part, the optimization. So 
if you ask our financial department, they always they will give you the, the straight up variable where we have to optimize contribution margin, uh, basically to push our our EBIT. But it's not that easy, obviously, yeah, because you we care we care for you as our customers, so we have. Our sales department takes different variables into account. We have certain markets we want to deliver to. We have certain cars we like to prefer to push into the market than others. For example, we obviously we want to strive the development of our electronic uh, vehicles, and we like obviously to you as customers, as evangelists who like electronic vehicles, to provide you with those cars. Yeah. One is actually at our booth, the i7, so you probably have to check it out afterwards. Yeah? And so basically all those parameters that the sales departments can take to, into account have, have, an, have an impact on our optimization. And to show you this, or like to also explain you this in a little bit detail, I would love to hand over to Jia, who gives you a little bit deeper understanding of it. Thank you, Mike. So, as Mike mentioned, we had two challenges as part of this project. The first one being the lack of transparency about which special options were impacted by the chemical shorter shortage and what is the optimal allocation related to this special option. So, what we did, we developed a tool based on analytics to cope with these two challenges. So, the tool is made about basically three steps. So, the first step is to get the data in. Second step is to create this transparency tool. And the third step is to optimize uh, the, the different special option based on the allocation. So on the first part, so the data source. So for those who have been familiar with such a project, getting data in is always the big challenge. So there will be data quality issue, data access issue. So you probably uh, are very familiar with such a kind of challenge. So fortunately for BMW, they already have a data lake in place called Cloud Data Hub, CDH. And many of these data assets were already in CDH. So BMW was able to take, for example, market demand, financial data directly out of the data platform, and then to combine them into the transparency tool. So the second step was to create this transparency tool. And for that, we, we basically combined the different data source. Uh, and then we were able to have, for each special option, the demand and shortage per model and per market. And these transparency tools were already the first value out of this project. And then finally, the third step is our optimization. So like Mike mentioned, based on filtering, we were able to optimize uh, based on the, the transparency cube that uh, we had before. Uh, so now we'll let Denise explain a bit more in detail uh, about the, the technical aspect of our solution. Thanks, Julian. So let's have a deeper look at the IT architecture. First of all, this is just a simplified version of our real IT architecture, but I think the idea has become very clear. So what we did, we built an IT architecture that is mainly serverless and relying on AWS Lambda services out of two main reasons, to be highly scalable and cost efficient. Now let's have a look at the left hand side. Here you can see our data source. The CDH, the Cloud Data Hub, the BMW Internal Data Lake. We use glue jobs to transfer the necessary data assets into our S3 bucket, which is the main base for our two modules, the Transparency UI and the Optimizer tool. These tools are following exactly this, what Julian just presented, to create transparency and to provide the best allocation of special options over markets. Now imagine you are a user on the right hand side here and you log in in our static web page. Then uh, the static web page is also hosted in an S3 bucket and then you can interactively trigger our transparency tool or the optimization tool. And there the magic happens. When you see our both modules, they are built very similar. So both have an orchestration of two Lambda services and a DynamoDB. This is mainly out of one reason, to overcome the 30 seconds timeout limitation which an API gateway provides. If you have more questions on this, please feel free to ask us afterwards, since I won't go too much into detail here for now. Then either the transparency tool or the optimizer terminates, and the results will then be 
go over the AWS QuickSight back to the end user. The QuickSight dashboards are integrated on our static web page, so the end user can interactively uh, check the results of the tools. But I think that was now enough from the theoretically part. Now let's deep dive in the demo. I hope you're curious to see how our tool looks like. So let's focus on the left-hand side and imagine I'm a purchaser at the BMW Group. And my boss now asked me to check for this part number here if we have a shortage situation. A part number can be, for example, a specific part which has a lot of semiconductor included. And since I'm the purchaser, I ask the supplier, OK, what is the supply for this part number? And the supplier told me in week 49 and in week 50, we have a supply from 80 units. And then I would trigger the request, request here. And on the right hand side, the AWS QuickSight dashboard will appear. I already preloaded this. Let me make this bigger for you. And now the first thing is I want to know in which specific special option this part number is included. So here I can see the adaptive LED headlight, which Mike already introduced. This is a headlight which is following your road, is demanding the specific part number. Please keep in mind, this is just a demo here. So the data are not real data, they are dummy data. And in reality, the, the relationship can be more complex. So one part number can be included in many specific special options. And of course, I can also insert a lot of special as part numbers. Now I'm interested in the demand of the specific part number. So I have an overview here. Here I can also see my supply. And then what shortage may be derived from that. And here I would see, for example, I have a shortage situation in week 49 and week 50. And I can also have a deeper look here on the second screen about the specific special option. OK, let's give a second. Yes, it loaded. Perfect. And here I can see, OK, what is the demand for the part number with the shortage next to it. And I can also have a more detailed look, for example, here on the heat map. What is the demand for the specific special option over the different markets? And I can also have a weekly zoom in to check which vehicle models have which demand for the adaptive LED headlight. Now I, as a purchaser, see, OK, we have a shortage situation. And I will come together with my colleagues from the sales department and from the uh, manufacturing, from the production. And we discuss the situation. And if we don't find a solution to overcome the shortage situation, then I would hand over to my sales colleague. And the sales colleague would now focus on the optimizer. And let's assume I'm now the sales colleague. And I would check, OK, in week 50, we have a shortage from around 9% for the, for the adaptive LED headlight. So I would just focus on this specific week. And would hit this button here again. I again preloaded this. And now I can set specific optimization parameters. First of all, the optimization corridor. This is a corridor which says what is the maximum allowed reduction which the optimizer is allowed to take out for each vehicle market combination. So for example, here by 90%, I'm only allowed, or the optimizer is only allowed to take out 90% for a specific vehicle model in a market, for example, in Germany. We introduced this corridor as a fairness bias, so you can assume otherwise the, op the optimizer would always take out the special options from the vehicles with the lowest contribution margin or from the markets with the lowest contribution margin. Then we have another look at the so-called 100% markets. So you can assume in some markets, the adaptive LED headlight is not a special option. It's mandatory. It's included in the default package. And therefore, the optimizer should not take it out. 
So for example, here in Japan, for this model, it's not allowed to take out the adaptive LED since it's included in this model per default. And then, last not but least, I can also add the strategic constraints, which Mike mentioned earlier. So for example, I can say now, okay, for example, Great Britain or Japan is a high priority market, and I want to protect this market from any reduction from the optimizer. Or I could also say, okay, let's protect all the electric vehicles from any reductions. And now I'm able to choose the target function. So either to optimize regarding the special option contribution margin or the vehicle contribution margin. I choose here now the vehicle contribution margin and would hit run optimization. And what now happens in the background, the lambda, the optimization lambda service will be triggered. It will perform a linear optimization by taking all the constraints into consideration and maximizing the contribution margin. And now the lambda terminates and the QuickSight dashboard will be loaded. And now I'm able to investigate the results of the optimizer. We can see now the specific vehicle models here and also the different markets. And for example, I see now the demand for Great Britain over the models the allocation which the optimizer proposes to me and also the reduction which the optimizer proposes to me. And then here at the end I would see, okay, this reduction would now fulfill our supply. Of course, this is these are just dummy data as I already mentioned before. And also the optimizer is just giving me a proposal. I would then again discuss with my colleagues from the sales from the purchasing and also from the production if this makes sense or if I should reiterate on it. And we also have here a small heat map included as well. So our optimizer has a lot of other cool different features. So for example, running different scenarios, comparing them. But with a look at the time, I would say let's jump back to the slides. Let's jump back to the slides so I can give you an update. Perfect. So I want to say, first of all, thank you to our colleagues from AWS and BCG who helped us to develop this tool super fast in only three months. And I would also say thank you to you as you joined our session today and you were listeners. And I hope when you go to the next time to your car dealer or on the BMW web page, you see that we are always aiming to achieve or we are always aiming for our most customer satisfaction. But this is sometimes very complex as you see. But analytic solutions and AWS analytic solutions help us to overcome this complexity. And with that being said, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to speak to you all today. If you have questions, feel free. We are around here. If you're interested in BMW, you can see our IC, uh, 7 Series at the uh, AWS Automotive booth. Check it out. And yeah, have a nice evening at the reInvent and enjoy your week here. Thanks so much. Thank you.